Wait, remember Randy Cunningham, 9th grade ninja? It was Disney XD's cartoon action show about a high school ninja. Not the ninja whose wife delivers sandwiches unasked for, or the blender. Along with his best friend fighting oncoming forces and preserving his identity as a vigilante. Every four years, a new ninja is chosen to take up the vigilante mantle and protect Norrisville from oncoming threats by the evil sorcerer and his dangerous allies, bajillionaire Hannibal McFist and his mad assistant scientist Viceroy. Together, Randy and Howard must fight them off with the help of the 800-year-old Ninja Namicon, a partially sentient book that quickly teaches Randy all of the ninja moves that he currently needs for each challenge he faces. I'd be careful of that book, though. The last book that ended in Namicon nearly took out all of my friends and I in a cabin out in the woods. Taking place mostly at their high school, the sorcerer has a lot of prey to take advantage of. He is able to do so by using their weaknesses or emotions to enchant them into monsters motivated by these amplified feelings. And it only makes sense that high school would be a breeding ground for em I, I mean feelings. Totally not speaking from my own experiences. Get that off the screen! The show's first episode premiered on August 13th, 2012, and ran for a total of two seasons. Each episode has two segments, so while there are 50 episodes, there are technically a hundred different segments. While the show was never cancelled or renewed, it left fans with a lot of questions. What does the future look like for Randy and Howard? A thank you would be nice. <laughs> Refrigerators. Created by Jed Elenoff and Scott Thomas, Randy Cunningham, 9th grade ninja, was originally supposed to be a vampire show. But Randy Cunningham, 9th grade vampire, just doesn't have that certain ring to it. That je ne sais quoi, if you will. So the two of them began brainstorming about what kids fantasize about being in high school. Sure, today it may be a vampire, thanks Twilight. But back in Jed and Scott's high school years of 1990 to 1994-ish, being a ninja was all the rage. And I guess they were right. I I did spend a lot of my time daydreaming in school, particularly about being an action hero or a superhero, because the Pythagorean Theorem was as boring as the Pythagorean Theorem. Anyway, they landed on the idea of Randy being crowned the new ninja of Norrisville High, and despite initially being written to be a show focused on Randy, boss battles, and his secret identity, over time it became more of a story about two best friends and their adventures together. Howard isn't just the backup that the hero relies on for support, he is actively in the field with Randy every day. Howard is very loyal to him and often provides a well-needed comic relief during more tense situations, which is essential considering the insane amount of danger they both face on the regular. The cast is packed full of comedic and recognizable actors. Ben Schwartz voices Randy Cunningham. Yes, John I got run over by Alexis. Ralphio and Sonic for both of the Sonic the Hedgehog movies. His best friend can't be overlooked either. Howard Wienerman is voiced by Andrew Lewis Caldwell who is best known for his role as Jude in The Matrix Resurrection. I'm kidding. I know him from Shredder Man Rules. The two seem to have had a lot of fun in the recording process and constantly play off of each other's energy. In fact, because there weren't any concern for what the voice actors were wearing during recording, they frequently decided to dress up together, donning matching full-body banana costumes and three-piece suits. On one occasion, Caldwell wore a ball gown. There's a lot of interview footage out there with the two of them, and their energy together is a Electric. The supporting cast is also iconic. We have John DiMaggio as one of the main villains, Hannibal McFist, who is also the stepfather of high school bully Bash Johnson. DiMaggio is also recognizable for his long list of iconic roles as Bender from Futurama, Jake in Adventure Time, and I could spend about 10 minutes reading out a longer list, but I'm not gonna. He's also Marcus Phoenix. Tim Curry voices the Sorcerer, also known for his on-screen work as Wadsworth in Clue and Dr. Frankenfurter in the Rocky Horror Picture Show. He also voices Nigel Thornberry in The Wild Thornberries and Professor Calamitous and Jimmy Neutron. Okay, just like John, the list is so long that I am 93.7% sure you know who he is and know his voice very well. We are also blessed with the voice of Kevin Michael Richardson, another alum with an incredible resume as Willem Viceroy III. Richardson has also voiced Trigun in Teen Titans, Shredder 
Potter in the 2012 animated Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Martian Manhunter in Young Justice, and Jerome in Family Guy. Last, but most definitely not least, Jim Rash voices Principal Slimovitz, also most recognizable as Dean Craig Pelton in Community. And that's like 70 bonus points right there. And while the show wasn't nominated for or awarded anything, the actors certainly did get some attention for their performances on the show. Jim Rash, Tim Curry, and Kevin Michael Richardson were nominated for Annie Awards and Behind the Voice Actors Awards. Now that we know vocally how this show was brought to life, let's take a look at how it was brought to life visually and just how it all came to be. I mean, not helpful, but cute. There's more Randy Cunningham, Ninth Grade Ninja on Disney XD. Randy Cunningham, Ninth Grade Ninja, continues on Disney XD. The art design is one of the most eye-catching things about this show. With heavy influence from Japanese art, its action sequences are vivid and entertaining. However, it is pretty evident that this is pretty explicitly only used for aesthetic purposes. The writing in the Ninja Namacon is complete nonsense. Just a bunch of characters that aren't quite real. The characters are a form of hiragana or katakana, but like a knockoff version. Come on, Disney. I know language isn't copyrighted. Why not use it properly? And I know they have the budget to hire someone that can actually write something that's, uh, you know, real. But I guess it could be argued that the lessons that are being taught to Randy by the Namacon aren't supposed to be read, but experienced through Randy alone. But still, it emphasizes that the animators use these tools to capture an Eastern aesthetic to fit the general vibe of the show. At least shows like American Dragon Jake Long and The Life and Times of Juniper Lee didn't just use a culture for purely aesthetic purposes. Now, when you look at this art style, the first thing that came to my mind was that this has a lot of Invader Zim character design choices in it. From the faces to the fingers, it was clear that this was the same person behind it all. Jonin Vasquez, the creator of Invader Zim, worked on this show. He wasn't given much direction with the design for Randy, he just had to look like a ninja. He initially wanted to give Randy red hair, but decided that he wanted more of a cohesive color palette for him to juxtapose ninja Randy and regular high school freshman Randy. And he ended up giving him a deep purple hair and the red hair feature went to Howard instead. Vasquez characterized Howard as a horror movie metal fan mixed with a whole mess of Nick Frost and a whole lot of cargo shorts. His personality complements Randy very well. While Randy is much more calmer and a bit of a rule follower, Howard tends to slack off a lot and is extremely driven by his own desires, like food, and not losing his food in fights that break out. Man's pulled out the used popcorn hat. As for the villains of the show, while most times coming off repetitive from the major evil doers, the way in which, like I mentioned earlier, students would have their emotions and feelings used to turn them into a beast of some sort for Randy to take down was a cool idea. It was not only to introduce new interesting and one-off villains, that they also had a purpose regarding the emotions or feelings that person was going through. Giving a slightly deeper layer to the overall story, and in some cases something to stick on to for for Randy that he can learn from or understand better. And that's thanks to the sorcerer's stank. Literally, stank. Yes, the sorcerer puts some stank on it. He's also like 800 years old and dwells trapped underneath the school, constantly finding ways to battle Randy so that he can eventually escape. Now he has a deal with the latest McDonald's menu item, McFist, and that is if he is able to help defeat Randy and set the sorcerer free, he can have a superpower of his choice. Not a bad deal whatsoever. As for the robots that Randy faces, Viceroy over here is the slightly overconfident mad scientist who likes to show off his latest and greatest, before Randy figures out how to destroy it. He works directly for McFist as the two constantly fail to foil a freshman's fearsome fists. As fun as this was, how was the reception of the show? Did all of this lead to many viewers tuning in every new episode? What does protecting the balls have to do with a hole digging contest? We'll be right back to Randy Cunningham on Disney XD. Get your ninja on! Randy Cunningham is back! Disney was busy cranking out all of the Randy Cunningham 9th Grade Ninja Flash games, and I was able to find just 18 of them right off the bat. Let me say that again. <clears throat> 18 Flash games. Uh, 
so yeah, the show must have been received really well. Uh, while critics give the show pretty mid reviews, audience ratings seem pretty high. I can attest to that personally, as I have been asked to cover this show at least a million times over the past several months. There clearly is a fan base out there that wants this show talked about more, or at bare minimum, seen by more eyes. The people who like the show really like it, and I get it. The show may not hit every emotional box or have a complex underlying plot, but it is fun, and by the end of it, you get left wanting more, and let's talk about that. There has been a lot of confusion regarding the future of this show. While clearly nothing is in production, nothing has been announced. After the second season, Disney was silent. They didn't announce a renewal, but they also didn't announce a cancellation. This left a lot of fans with a sense of hope, but also a lot of questions. The final episode of season two leaves us off in a semi-cliffhanger moment. The creep, who we see in almost every episode, speaks for the first, and evidently last, time to say something ominous about Randy's greatest ninja battles still being ahead of him. It was also confirmed in a Scott Thomas Tumblr post that he is immortal. So it's clear that they left the show open to another season. The series clearly is not done with the story it wants to tell, and it seems that the fans aren't done either. There's a change.org petition going around, which I know, I know, I initially see these happen and I don't expect anything as they rarely ever end in the thing being petitioned for to happen, but then I remembered that for shows like this, it's really audience demand that brings shows back. It has about 26,000 signatures at the time, so who really knows what could happen? I wouldn't get your hopes up, but I also would would never say never. But I will say, for me personally, I love more of this show. I want to see Randy go through all of his high school years as the ninja up until the moment the mantle is passed down to the next person eager and nervous to start high school while being tasked as the ninja protector of it. I originally overlooked this show for the fact I never saw anything about it, but I thank you, the audience, for non-stop commenting about this show to me. Without that, it may have been a long time, or even never, that I would have given in this show the time of day. I didn't know about it and I'm glad I watched through its two seasons knowing very little going in, because I'm taking more going out than I thought I would. For Jed and Scott, a month before the last episode of Randy Cunningham Ninth Grade Ninja aired, they premiered their new live action show titled Best Friends whenever. So it could be that the creators were ready to try something new, or maybe Randy Cunningham really was over and they had their next job lined up. But if it does return, they may have less of a major role in any of the potential future episodes. Thomas, though, did reblog the change.org petition on his Tumblr, so he definitely is on board with another season. But then again, that's all just speculation. Would you like to see this show come back for a third season? And did you enjoy watching it when it first aired? Let me know in the comments. As always, Thanks so much for watching. Make sure to hit the like button and subscribe for more content like this, or I'll cry myself to sleep without your support and validation. Follow me on Twitter, and I'll be back with another video soon, but until then, later.